All right, <clears throat> real quick, we're going to take a look at the HD DJI Geyser. Uh, this system being sent out uh, will have everything installed as you see it here. Uh, we have the DJI radio. We have the geyser itself with the props installed on the Popo shafts. We also have the hero mount. We've got the air unit mounted at the top to be better give it ventilation. Uh, we've changed the design from inside to the outside. This also gives you the ability to, to access the storage compartment for the SD card as well as the USB. Um, as well as any binding that in the future may need to be done if you ever switch systems. Um, you also have the goggles coming and these are set up as well. Everything is paired and ready to go and fly. Uh, actually what we can do, you're always going to want to power your radio on first. You can go ahead and at that point if you'd like, um, we'll plug the battery into the goggles just to have those running. And then now uh, always check your switches, make sure everything is in the far position, which is usually off. You hear the radio beeping, that's because it's not connected. Uh, your arm switch is gonna be this switch right above your throttle, so we're gonna make sure it's all the way up. And we'll power the quad on. We'll give it a second and we'll see everything connect. All right. You see now we have the green light and you still hear the beeping. That beeping is actually now the throttle being up. So we'll turn that down and that'll make sure that we know now we can arm the quad. So on the goggles itself, uh, on the side, it does show the channel number right here. So it's in channel one mode right now. Um, you can change the channel quickly here. All your access buttons are over here for recording both on the air unit and on the goggles. It does not come with an SD card, so you're gonna wanna do that. Insert that SD card here in the goggles on the bottom side, uh, right over here, and then on the air unit on the side of it. Now, there is additional latency when recording on the air unit. So if you do not want additional latency, you can not record on the air unit and only record on the goggles. Um, that's gonna be user defined me if i'm catching the video on the hero there's no need to record on the air unit so if you're flying without the hero though installed then you can go ahead and record on the air unit that's my suggestion all right so now that we have everything laid out i told you this was the arm i'm going to go ahead and hold the quad down and i'm going to show you that it will arm there we go it armed uh you did hear it sounded a little loud because it's down on the ground, I'm pushing down on it. You're also hearing the little bit of, you're hearing the prop slightly strike the inside right here of the duct. Good tip, if you're moving this around and it starts catching, then you may need to trim your props. But before you do, always make sure to try and make the, the, the duct more circular. And there you go, you can hear it now only barely touching. Now, this brings me to just talking about the props. To install the props, you're gonna use a, metal pick of some sort. I'm just using tweezers. You can use uh, the tip of a 1.5. You can use anything that you can get to push the button on the props to take the props off. When you first get the props, the ones installed will be already cut into the grooves. And that means that the little bit of just change and in, 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 uh, little bit of shape that's misshapen about the, the ducts being that they're 3D printed, they're not always exactly perfect you it grinds into the ducts a little bit the first time you install them uh, the next set if you have to replace the props and you go to put them in again they're going to be cut just a little hair too big and that's purposefully uh, so when you go to spin them you can see which one may need a little bit of trimming and you're going to want to just use some clippers and you can just clip the edges of the props uh, right, right on the very tips just to clip the ends to make them no longer grind. 
Uh, like I said, you're gonna notice a little bit of pattern here that's worn out. Uh, that's, again, intended on the first time that you run these things, it kind of cuts grooves a little bit into the side. Uh, you definitely don't wanna you know, cut any deeper grooves. So when you put the next set on, if they don't spin freely, I would cut them just shy of being free. Uh, again, when you transport this thing or move it around even, just grab it or set it or crash it, uh, the ducts get deformed, so you need to make sure you use your hands kind of to kind of open them up and you can kind of see where they stick. So <clears throat> make sure no matter what, whenever you're going, whenever you're flying this thing, you're always checking the ducts because you don't want to cut into them. That being said, you also want to check your screws pretty consistently. Uh, all of the screws, including the motor screws, all have Loctite. That being said, they typically will get loose sometimes around these uh, outer edges because they vibrate a lot. So you're going to want to make sure you kind of tighten these down and make sure they're good. Uh, every five or six flights, I would check them and make sure. If these start to become loose, you can lose the screw. And then what happens is the duct starts flapping around and you get a lot of noise or a lot of uh, damage done to the props. Lastly, with uh, whenever you do put those uh, new props in or you're, you're checking your ducts and you feel that there may be just a little bit of the, the, the plastic that was kind of cut away or melted off, it kind of gets pushed up. You can use the edge of a really nice sharp X-Acto knife and just very lightly kind of cut underneath that little piece of melted uh, material. And then if you use a pair of needle nose or something, you wanna be really careful not to like snag or pull too, too hard. You can just nicely pull that little piece off by using the, the knife and a little, like I said, a little needle nose or something. And what that does is, is again, it, it's that little piece that got rubbed. So the prop, when it cut into the to the duct, it, it, it had to you know melt the plastic or cut the plastic. So it kind of melts it and it kind of just gets pushed to the ring. So there we did, we just cleaned that one off. There should be no more. We'll make sure they're all cleaned up before it ships. But that's one thing that you definitely need to do and just keep an eye on is anytime you start hearing or seeing that the props are starting to touch. So these are actually now nice and free. I, I didn't do anything. All I did was uh, make sure everything was clear. And now you'll probably hear that it's gonna be a little less loud on the table. There we go, much better. So at any rate, you just wanna check and make sure they're not really grinding. Um, that's gonna be your build. These antennas here are stuck in really nice and well. If for some reason you crash and they get pulled out, you're gonna want... You're gonna want to basically just pull back on here get the antenna in and into the socket and then push firmly to snap them in place. That's gonna be the way you're gonna wanna take them off. Uh, the only other way to get to them would be to actually unscrew uh, the front mount and then take the whole plate off and underneath you're gonna see two screws securing this underneath to the plate. Um, there's also gonna be, there's two screws missing from the standoffs on purpose. Uh, it provides the standoff to still be there, but allows you to set the, the, the air unit over them. Uh, and you could then take the air unit out, uh, re-put in the antennas, and then you can actually stick the, the, the back end first and then kind of pull the front over the front, and it'll go back in the way that it is now. Uh, but that's gonna be really the only upkeep you need. Uh, we got two battery straps on here for your 5S 1550s. You can also run 1300 6S if you'd like. Uh, everything's power regulated, so you don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, in adjusting the mount, always be careful. It's just it's got a little bit of an overhang here, and then you just you need to to not pull and push on it too hard. Just gently move it into the position you'd like it, uh, and leave it there, or, or you know slide your camera into there uh, after that. So we'll go ahead and show you. Just take your camp camera and slide it right there. There we go. All right, so that's your new platform. If you have any other questions, let us know, and we'll see and talk to you soon. Thanks.